Perhaps the most well-known story is about a righteous man who took on the mission of saving all living things on a planet when the creator's patience was overwhelmed and he destroyed humanity to free the Earth for a new civilization. At first there was nothing, temptation gave birth to sin, and Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise and gave birth to three sons, Cain, Abel and Seth. But one day Cain killed his younger brother Abel, for which he was cursed by the Creator and forced to flee to the east, where he was saved by fallen angels, the Watchers, who helped Cain build a great civilization. However, filled with vice, they consumed the world and nearly destroyed the angels. Only the descendants of Seth fought to protect what remained of creation. And one day, the last in their line, Noah was supposed to become a man, for which his father brought him to a sacred place. But he did not have time to perform the ceremony. The descendants of Cain, who appeared, killed the man to seize the land. Noah had to flee. Years passed, and now his sons helped their father find food for the family. Suddenly, the father notices that his son Ham is plucking a flower. He teaches the boy not to destroy in vain that which cannot help them survive. The boy nods and walks away, and Noah sees a drop of water falling from the sky, and on that spot another flower appears. And suddenly he hears girl, Ela. The woman helps her, but then Cainites appear. The family runs away and ends up in a strange scorched place where the pursuers do not follow. But stone watchers appear and capture the people. Noah loses consciousness. When he comes to, he sees the watchers arguing about their fate. Noah tries to tell them about his grandfather, Methuselah, but it doesn't seem to interest the stone giants. They decide to leave the humans to die. At night, Ela asks him to sing to her, and Noah sings a song that his father sang to him, and the girl falls asleep. Neyama pities the girl, who will never be able to have children due to her wound. Suddenly, they hear the sound of stones, and a fallen angel, Og, appears from the darkness. He tells them that the Creator made them on the second day, and they were not made of stone, but of light. They wanted to help people who were weak and defenseless and disobeyed the Creator, for which He cast them to the earth. Stones and dirt concealed their fiery glow, but they still believed that the man was the best of all creations. With their help, they rose from the mud and gained strength. But then humans turned the gift into cruelty. Only Methuselah defended them, as the angels were almost completely wiped out, and the few survivors were left imprisoned in a stone shell. If Noah heard the voice of the Creator, Og is ready to help them. In addition, Noah emits a radiance similar to that which emanated from Adam. The fallen angel leads the family to Mount of Methuselah. Taking Shem with him, Noah enters a cave where he meets his grandfather. But the latter puts Shem to sleep because he wants to talk to Noah without the child listening. He knows why his grandson has come. Once his father Enoch warned that the Creator would destroy the world if people did not wake up. Noah tells him about his dream of drowning in water, and Methuselah treats him to tea, which causes visions from which he understands that the storm is inevitable. It will wipe away the filth from the face of the earth. He must build a giant ship, an ark, and save all the animals. Before saying goodbye, the old man gives Noah a seed from Eden. Returning to the family, Noah tells them about the impending disaster and their mission. He goes outside and plants the seed he received not far from the tent. The next morning, Og is captured, and the Watchers gather to kill Noah, accusing him of deceit and betrayal. But at that moment, a spring suddenly gushes from the ground. The Watchers freeze in amazement, and streams scatter to the sides. The earth begins to turn green, and a mighty forest grows before the astonished eyes of the people. Seeing this, the Watchers decide to help the man and begin building the Ark. Time passes, the Ark is almost finished. Romantic feelings arise between Shem and Ela, which causes jealousy in Ham. One day, a massive flock of birds appears over the Ark, and Noah realizes it has begun. They put the first inhabitants of the Ark to sleep using the smoke of sleep-inducing plants and settle them into cages made for them. Noah teaches his children the responsibility of caring for the animals that they will need to revive their species, which makes Ham think about his own pair. He asks Noah questions, but he urges them to have faith in the Creator. One day, a multitude of snakes crawls towards the Ark. The people are initially frightened, but Noah reminds them that they must save everyone. 
The family continues to work on the Ark, when one day Ham hears a girl's laughter in the forest, and going to investigate falls into the hands of Cain's tribe, led by their king, Tubal Cain. The king tricks Ham into leading them to the ship, where the tribe meets Noah. He orders Ham to drop the weapon he received from the king, and Ham confesses that he did not believe in the flood, but seeing the birds flying here made him check everything himself. And now, learning about the true purpose of the giant structure, he plans to take the Ark. But the Watchers do not allow the tribe to do this. The enraged king threatens to return to the Ark with a thousand strong army, and the crowd leaves. The people corrupted by sin do not wish to accept their fate, so they forge weapons and create an army to capture the Ark, while at the same time huge herds of animals rush towards it, which are also put into cages and put to sleep. One day, Ela comes to Noah and confesses that she cannot become a real wife to Shem. And in general, being barren, she has no purpose on the Ark. Noah comforts the girl, as he considers her a priceless gift from the Creator. But the girl does not want to be a source of conflict between the brothers and is ready to leave. At night, Noah goes to the nearest settlement of Canaanites to find wives for his sons, Ham and Japheth. He witnesses cannibalism, slavery, child trading for food, and other atrocities. After seeing this, he realizes that humans are not worthy of salvation and returns to the Ark alone. However, his son Ham, who meets him, is outraged by his decision and runs away from the camp. Noah's wife tries to persuade him to listen to his sons, as they have the right to happiness. But Noah is convinced that it's better to remain childless than to have an unrighteous person nearby, as the time of mercy has passed and the hour of reckoning has come. Meanwhile, Ham runs away to the city, and Nehemiah comes to Methuselah. She asks him to influence Noah, as without wives there will be no children. The old man reminds her that the Creator has decided to destroy the world, so why argue? Noah will still make the decision. At the same time, Ham falls into a pit, where he meets a girl whom he offers food to, and Noah sends Shem to search for his brother. Eli is also searching for him and stumbles upon Methuselah in the woods, who asks for permission to bless the girl as she is his family. The old man touches her forehead, and the wind begins to rustle, and objects blur before her eyes. But everything returns to normal, and Methuselah lets her go to Shem. Meanwhile, Noah sees clouds gathering over the ark, and it begins to rain. Ham realizes it's time to run, and takes the found girl with him, while panic breaks out in the city, and the king calls on his people to go to the ark, where Shem and Elah also arrive. Ham and the girl also run to the ship, but the girl gets trapped. Noah manages to grab his son, but the girl dies under the crowd's feet. Everyone runs to the Ark, but the Watchers come forward. They scatter the people, letting Noah through. He sees how the guards perish from the king's fiery weapons, closes the doors of the Ark and orders his son to protect their mother. He witnesses the dying guards shedding their stone skins and ascending into the sky in clusters of light, for the Creator forgave his angels and brings them home. Noah remains alone before the gates as the last guard ascends, and suddenly fountains of water erupt from the ground, instantly throwing the attackers away from the Ark. Methuselah finds the berry and gratefully greets the waves that rushes towards him. The Ark is engulfed by enormous waves, and Noah barely manages to grab onto a dangling rope, while the king enters the Ark, which is witnessed by Ham. The ship sails on the vast waves that flooded the land, Outside, the cries of the drowning could still be heard, and his wife and son try to persuade Noah to save more people. But Noah is resolute, and soon the waves wash away everyone. Noah asks his family to understand him, for the Creator doesn't destroy his creation without reason, and he tells the story of the creation of the world. At first there was nothing but darkness and silence, but the Creator commanded the light to be, and on the first day it began to take shape. On the second day, the world appeared, and the great light warmed it by day, while the lesser one illuminated it at night. The waters separated, and the solid earth appeared, and on the third day, life was born on the land and in the water. Creatures appeared that would not be found anywhere else. The world was filled with life. All those who crawl, run, fly, and walk. And it was good, unspoiled, and pure. Everyone was a part of a greater whole, each in their own place. It was paradise. And then he created man and woman, father and mother of all people. God gave them a choice to yield to temptation or to remain pure. 
but they tasted the forbidden fruit. And for 10 generations since Adam's time, sin has lived in every person. Brother goes against brother, one nation against another, man rises up against his creator. People have destroyed and polluted their beautiful pure world. And now it all repeats itself, the paradise will come again, but without man. The creator judged people, and they must die. After the death of their parents, the sons will bury them, and then bury each other. And when the doors and prays to the creator for mercy, but he's silent. And Noah promises to go to the end, and at that moment the rain stops. Eli is convinced that the creator is smiling at their child, but Noah denies this. If it is a boy, he will live. If it is a girl, he will kill her. And then Shem and Eli decide to leave. They build a boat and fill it with supplies. But the birds released by humans return with clean paws, which means that the land is nowhere nearby. Nehemiah is sure that the children will die and begs her husband to cancel his decision, otherwise he will die hated by everyone he loved. But Noah intends to do what he decided. The king, who is watching all of this, understands that the day of his revenge has come and orders Ham to lure his father into this corner of the ark. The young man hesitates, but the king reminds him that a man does not live by the will of heaven, but by his own. And to illustrate his point, he kills another animal. Nehemiah says goodbye to her children, but when Noah emerges, he sets the boat on fire, because God chose him, knowing that he is able to complete the mission. And then Elah goes into labor. Shem stands guard outside her tent, when Ham calls for their father, saying that the animals are awoke and begun devouring each other. Noah runs after him, and then the king attacks him. Ham watches the struggle, unsure of whom to help, while Ela gives birth to twin girls. The woman screams in terror, but Shem promises that their father will not harm their children and arms himself before going after Noah, who is already losing strength. The king orders Ham to kill his father and become the new leader of the ark. But at that moment, a loud noise is heard, the boat shakes violently and everything goes flying in different directions. It turns out that the ark has run aground and water is pouring in through the holes. The king prepares to kill Noah and promises to build a new world in his own image. Finally, Ham comes to his senses and kills the villain. Pushing his sons aside, Noah rushes to the tent, but Eli is not there. Nehemiah tries to protect the grandchildren, but Noah hears a child's cry and emerges onto the surface of the ark, where Eli is trying to calm the crying children and sings them a song that Noah once sang to her. The man raises his knife, but at the last moment he kisses the little girls. And then Nehemiah sees a dove flying with an olive branch in its beak. The ark finally reaches land, where Noah, having found grapes, makes wine and spends whole days and nights drinking, trying to drown his sorrows for not fulfilling the creator's plan. His sons build homes while he lives in a cave by the ocean. And one day Ham says goodbye to his family and leaves to seek his destiny. Noah confesses that he could not kill the girls because he immediately felt love for them. But he cannot be with his family now because he has failed the creator. However, the girl reminds him that the Creator gave him a choice, and he chose mercy and love. Noah can be a father and grandfather again and help avoid mistakes. The man goes to Nehemiah, and she forgives him. Noah blesses her children and grandchildren, wishing them to live and continue their line, understanding what is good and what is evil, remembering the great flood and not forgetting the will of God. A rainbow appears in the sky, marking the end of the existence of Cain's tribes, the disappearance of human sins, and the beginning of the Creator's blessings. Despite the fact that the movie is an adaptation of a part of the most famous book on Earth, it does not make sensational discoveries and is not the ultimate truth. It is just a peculiar reflection on eternal questions. How do we live? For what purpose? What will remain after us?